Come on in. Yeah. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the second half of WordCamp. I hope everyone enjoyed their lunch and had a great time, and you've enjoyed the session so far. So today I'm going to talk about which WordPress job is right for you. I've had a few WordPress jobs. I've been, um, let's see here, I think we go right into it. In 2008, I discovered WordPress about five years ago. I had been doing web development for about 15 years when I discovered WordPress. And I did everything by hand. I did all of the code by hand. I did all the graphics by hand. And I would not use a content management system because that was cheating. <laughs> that was cheating and I wanted to do everything the hard way. Um, <laughs> so I, I found out about WordPress and I used it for the first time as a blog for one of my clients. And I quickly found out that there was a lot more that WordPress could do besides just blogs. So I started using it for all of my websites. I started using it exclusively for all my websites. I built 300 WordPress websites, small ones, using just WordPress. And I would never go back to hand coding ever again. Never. Well, little bits here and there. So in 2009, I actually got a job at a small WordPress agency. They were exclusively WordPress, and they serviced a lot of small businesses, a lot of rotary clubs, nonprofits. Those are the types of, of websites that I would build for them. Um, it was pretty much everything was a very low budget job, so everything was fast, everything was super hacky, as fast as you could get it working, push it let it go live. So it was that was the kind of environment. I, I worked with about three other developers and I would kind of project manage it, the work between myself and the other, the other people depending on what their skills were. So I did that for about three years and they weren't making enough money because they weren't charging enough and they kind of folded. Luckily after that, um, well shortly like when, when that was coming to a close, I spoke at my first WordCamp, Orange, and it was at Orange County four years ago. And that was at this WordCamp, Orange County, because so I've been to different WordCamp, Orange Counties, or different WordCamps all over the states. And I had a lot of fun. I spoke at, but on BuddyPress. I had never been to a WordCamp. I had never seen a WordCamp. I didn't even really know what WordPress really was at that time, but I had a lot of fun, and I started getting involved with the community right away. Um, in 2012, I got a WordPress evangelist job at a hosting company, which I loved. This was a wonderful job. I traveled to different states. I spoke at 25 different WordCamps all over the United States and Canada. It was a lot of fun. I learned a lot about WordPress and about the community at large. But what I didn't get to do at this job was a lot of coding or any coding at all. So all the coding that I would get to do would be coding that I would be giving in a presentation. So I got um, tired of this, so I wanted to go more into coding. I really miss coding. I miss working with clients. And I got a job with Web Dev Studios, who is the largest WordPress, one of the largest WordPress agencies out there. I lasted there for nine months. It was a really high-pressure, high-stress, multi-site, multi-language, Microsoft sites, just super complex. And it was super stressful, but I learned so much during that job. It was great. And in my experience of having all these different jobs, I saw that there was a lot of opportunity for jobs that hadn't been filled yet. Um, so this brings me to where I am today. I'm currently a teacher with Girl Develop It. I teach HTML and CSS. I also write for serverpress.com. That's an awesome software. Yay! I also speak at WordCamps. And as far as working with clients, I do content design and development. I do a little bit of everything, which is kind of how I like it. Um, I like doing a lot of different little things. And I also do a lot of site administration and domain configuration. And this in itself is not an area where I find people having jobs in site administration and domain configuration. But it is really complex, and it takes a lot of follow up and follow through. So that is a good area to get into, I think, because it's something that's necessary and it does require a lot of follow through. If you've ever transferred a domain to different registrar, you know that it's a lot of back and forth. It's a specialist thing. And then I'm also a consultant. So I have a lot of people that will come up to me and they go, I know you know WordPress. 
build me something awesome. But what they don't realize is that when you work with WordPress, it's more a collaboration effort between you and the developer. You and the developer, if you choose to work with a developer. It, when, when I work with somebody, I try to make that as much as their website as it is mine. I help them to realize their dreams. So that kind of can be anywhere. That can span from creating marketing materials to creating campa campaigns or a publishing schedule for the blog. So all of those things are kind of contained. So now I'm going to go into a little bit about different types of WordPress jobs that are out there now. And I'd like to see this expand a lot. And I think there is a lot of room for expanding of WordPress jobs in the economy. So the first one that everyone knows about mostly is web development. But under web development, that is a huge umbrella. And there are a lot of different sub jobs within that. There's front end development, there's back end development, or a little of both. Back end would be like you create template tags. The front end would be somebody who uses the template tags. And if you don't know about template tags, that's OK, too. It's developer stuff. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Or you, can be, or you can work on your own as a freelancer, which is awesome, because you can set your own hours. You can work all through the night and all through all the holidays and weekends if you want to be a freelancer, which is usually what you end up doing. Or you can work for a company which has a little bit more stability. You have usually set hours, set rate of pay. Um, it's a little bit more stable. So it really depends. And I've done both of these for a really long time. For me, I prefer the freelancer because I like the ability to work at 3 in the morning sometimes if I feel like it, or sleep till noon. <laughs> it's all good. So then I worked um, the small WordPress agencies. There's a lot more of these popping up that I see. And they service people using WordPress. And, and while I talk about WordPress, I really want people to kind of think of WordPress as more of a tool rather than as the way that they should do things. While it is um, a way that you can do things, it is the tool that you really accomplish what you can with the knowledge that you have. So all of your experience, all of your past business experience can be brought to your world in WordPress. So I talked a little bit about the small WordPress agencies and the large WordPress agencies, which are really complex, standard compliant sites. Um, if you prefer doing a lot more hacking and doing things maybe not the official standard way, then you might want to do it as with a small agency because cost is usually, budget is usually what they're looking at in decreasing. The, large, the benefit of working at a large WordPress agency is great. The people there are super talented. There is a lot to learn always. And you will always find that there's a lot to learn. Um, so if you like doing that, if you really enjoy standards, compliant websites, and giving that, I would recommend working with web dev or 10up. Those are both great agencies. Also, the other thing that you hear about with WordPress, uh, different types of WordPress jobs is designers. So designers also encompasses a large umbrella. It's not just people that design websites, but it's also people who do graphics or CSS SaaS. So people that do code can be a designer if they're doing it in a way that they're doing it to be aesthetically pleasing to the eye, um, taking typography into, a, into account, taking the way that the page is laid out. That is something that a designer would do. They're also involved with user interface and user experience. And what this simply means is that this is how the experience that your user has when they first come to your site. Is this going to be a positive experience or a negative experience? Are they coming to find what they came to look for? Usually when somebody goes to your site, they're looking for something very specific. Were they able to get it? That's going to determine whether they have a good or a bad experience. Also, if you're a designer, you want to think about what problems you're trying to solve with your design. Are you trying to dissolve maybe a user interface issue where people are not clicking on the contact form because the button is hidden? Or is it another reason that people aren't filling out your form because it's a usability issue? These are, things, these are the types of problems that designers solve with their designs. There's also a lot of marketers. And I think this is more if I had to put myself into one category. I think marketer would be more of what I do. It's more of a small business consultant 
Um, you could do a lot of keyword and SEO research. That is a whole, um, almost a whole um, specific area of study in itself. Um, there's also the process of analyzing the sales in the Google Analytics. Um, I once heard, and this is the most best piece of advice I had ever heard, was that somebody said, don't put Google Analytics on your site if you don't intend to change anything. Which is a great thing because I always thought, oh, got to get Google Analytics on that site, got to get Google Analytics. But I have never looked at any of the reports and there is no chance that I'm making any changes soon. So just save yourself the headache, go with like stats. You really just want to know that people are coming to your site, um, not all of the information. Unless you have like a specific person that's just meant to dig up information and then you make a pr improvements to your website according to that data, then it will become useful. Also, marketers generate business ideas. They see opportunity in places where other people don't see opportunity. They may see like, oh, this service, the, here is a service, here's a need that is not being serviced by anybody. And one of these good, like for instance, one area where I think this is, is creating documentation for plugins, or creating documentation for themes, or just creating documentation in general. That's something that everybody hates doing, developers especially hate doing it. But people that love doing documentation really love doing documentation. So that's an area that you can get into. Another area that's really big, and I would also consider myself this as well as a WordPress power user. And the WordPress power user, they may even do some coding and development. I'm thinking that this is the biggest area of growth because as more and more plugins come out there and more and more support comes out there, there's less that you actually, there's more information for you to be able to do what you need to do. Um, so the plugins are out there, uh, calendars are getting created, different, different plugins, calendar is one area where there's a big um, area for opportunity in that area, I think. And WordPress power users, they know which plugin to put where and what will do what. So they know kind of like what the um, full responsibility of WordPress is. They also will hopefully, hopefully they do this, is when it gets to be too much, or if there's something that they don't know how to do, they would triage to somebody that would know more. And there's a lot of companies that just do this. They specialize in maintenance and administration. And um, also I think the WordPress power users Content creators are in high demand. A lot of people want websites, but you have to have text for your website. And not a lot of people write just text for websites. So the ability to write marketing text for websites is just highly sought after by a lot of my clients. And it's something that if you can do really well, you can definitely make a way for yourself out there. Education is another area that's really growing. I'm finding in my own personal freelance experience that one-on-one -on -one training is something that people are asking for more and more. They don't want to attend a class. They don't want to study themselves. They want one-on-one -on -one training. And it's really effective, um, I found, when I've done one-on-one -on -one training, because you can ask those questions that might take up too much time, like at a meetup or somewhere else. But you can really get kind of specialized training in whatever area you need. Also, teaching in classrooms is also another way um, to kind of take the knowledge that you've learned and kind of turn that around and give it to others. Um, presenting at conferences is another good way to kind of get in the WordPress and become a, like a specialist in your area. The best thing that you can do is find your kind of area of passion and follow that and do documentation and um, volunteer in that kind of area. Also, I wanted to mention cre about creating lesson plans. This is something you may not think will be a WordPress um, specific job, but it's actually, if you go to make.wordpress.training, you can create lesson plans that are for use for teachers in their classrooms and meetups. So that's another way. There's also reviewing uh, wordpress.tv. That's a good way to contribute and educate yourself as well. So the most important thing to do is to really find your passion. So to find your passion, you have to find what really lights your fire. What really, what would you rather be doing instead of doing work? 
Like if money were no object at all, what would you be doing? Would you be teaching? Would you be traveling? Because traveling is a valid, that would be probably my choice is to travel. But so you want to kind of find something that integrates all of those passions that you have. So when you're working, you are having fun and it doesn't feel like you are working. Um, you have nothing, you have to be burning with an idea or a problem or wrong that you want to write to kind of stick through through the whole project. So once you have that goal in mind, as long as you keep your, your focus on that goal, you should be good. So back to the question, what would you do if money were not an object? Would you be shopping? Would you be, these are all valid jobs that could be tied into what WordPress people do. In, in my experience, pretty much every, how can I say this? <laughs> so pretty much every skill that's out there can be used in some capacity in a WordPress form. Um, or if it's not WordPress, something else. But I like WordPress the best myself. Um, I also say to play often and with purpose. This is where you're going to actually learn the most information is when you're actually playing. When you're doing for something for no reason other than to see how it works. Like you install a plugin that you've never seen before just to see what it does. This is kind of like this purposeful play that is so helpful and you will actually get creati creatively inspired. Things will come to you when you're playing. Things will go like, well, and things will start connecting. And also it's a form of research as quoted by Albert Einstein. Playing is, a, is the highest form of research. And it is. If you think about it, everything that was discovered is usually discovered by accident. And when it comes to fruition, it's awesome. So one thing you want to do, regardless of which um, WordPress job you choose, you want to do some volunteering and contribution. And there are so many different ways in different areas to do this. Um, it could be as much as setting up a chair for a meetup. It could be anything that gets you in front of other people and gets your skills known to other people so that when they go to have something done, they know that you're an expert in that area. But when you're volunteering, there are a few guidelines that I recommend, and just even in general business sense, just to keep your word be reliable because no one likes flakes. You can volunteer for everything, like the high heavens, but if you don't follow up and keep your word on it, then no one's really going to appreciate that. So like they say, the road to hell is paved with good intentions. Make sure that you're following up on, on your promises. And be friendly and easy to work with. This will save you so much problem, no matter what you're doing, to be friendly and be easy to work with. Because I will hear people say like, well, I like this person over here. Their code is good. But you know what? They're kind of, they always give me some kind of backlash. So I'm not going to work with them. And this is what will happen if you're not nice. So it, being nice is, is just counts for more than you know, I think. And then I would say also to contribute where you can. Allow others to contribute as well. So even if you know how to do something, it might be better to let somebody else do it just so they have the experience of doing that. And that is a gift to them when you do that and you allow them to do that. So that's pretty awesome. And then by doing volunteering, different types of volunteering, not even volunteering, contribution can be as simple as answering a question on Facebook about WordPress. It could be as simple as answering going to the WordPress support forms and answering questions there. You could answer Facebook questions. All of there's all the social medias have a lot of questions. You could also give valuable feedback to somebody that asks for it. Um, not, not all the time. I mean, sometimes you may have good feedback, but they may not be ready to hear for it. So you want to make sure that they're in a space that they can hear the feedback. And you want to create your own opportunities as much as you can. Make yourself invaluable. Um, what is something that needs to be done that nobody is taking care of yet? Is this something I can do? Is this something I even want to do? You want to ask yourself these questions. So pretty much the opportunities will happen. You need to make yourself ready through knowledge and meeting other people through the preparation, and when that opportunity comes along, you'll be able to slide right in and, and grab it. And <coughs> so a lot of what I think, a lot of my philosophy is generating your future, generating your own future. And um, 
by addressing a specific need that is not currently addressed. So finding your niche market is kind of like, somehow you want that to tie into your passion. You want to find ways to work smarter instead of harder. Build your case for your service. You could put together a report of why it is important for me to write for your blog because you will increase by this much, or why it's important for me to do this, and you can present that to your client as an edge case. Um, be, again, be easy to work with, helpful and honest, and keep your word. Networking in community is, is another way that you can find opportunities, especially if you surround yourself with people that are smarter than yourself. You can learn from them, it's just like awesome. Um, refer out jobs when they're out of your skill set or availability, because not only will you look like a winner, but the person who you gave the job to will be very thankful that you gave them that job. Be generous with your knowledge and learn from others' gifts. Partner with talented people on projects for the purpose of learning. Um, you don't need a reason, you don't need permission, and you don't certainly need a reason to be able to build like a new plugin or a new theme or something that addresses a problem that you have and sharing that with the rest of the people in the community because the whole community will benefit. So I want to thank everybody for coming out. I want to thank SiteGround Web Hosting and also let you guys know that there is available one free year of hosting for SiteGround for WordCamp attendees. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, it is. Take advantage. Even if you're not going to use it, I, re I, say re I recommend that you take advantage of it. I've had accounts that I've had set up for five years now. So yeah, get a picture of that because that's definitely worth taking advantage of. And then I also wanted to thank ServerPress. Oh, you want to see that again? Okay, sure. Certainly. That's the important part. Because it's a good like $250 worth of free services there. And I love SiteGround. I have like 15 of my sites hosted there, and I just use them for everything. And I've had two problems with them, and they were super responsive. So I'm, I'm, I'm sold on them. <laughs> they're located, they're actually in Europe. They're located in Europe. Oh, nice. That's good to know. A US rep is here also. And I also wanted to say, thank ServerPress because this presentation is being run off a local WordPress installation, and it's also um, created using their WP Presenter plugin, which uses Reveal.js to kind of slide through. So I will make these available to everybody later um, via my tweet. Here's where you can reach me, and does anyone have any questions? Or let me let you get this information here. So Blossom is asking what, we, what I think that the biggest growth areas are for jobs. And I think the biggest area are going to be like those outside of development, um, those that focus around service, customer service centered areas to, to different um, people. And education is really big too. Yes? Actually, I did want to mention that I, I work at a college what we use a lot for is collaborative environments. So nice. people tend to use it a small fraction of their daily workload. So it becomes, it becomes a, a, a tool for, for that. That's awesome. So he works at a college and they're using Word, WordPress as an online collaboration tool. Yeah, I mean, we use it for the website, but, but in that sense it is a collaborative tool. That's awesome. Yeah, I like to see that. I like to see where people are able to collaborate with WordPress. Very awesome. Yes? You talked about your uh, training again, so you talked about the increasing demand for one-on-one -on -one training. Mm -hmm. So if someone goes to your website or wants to reach out to you, I don't know if you can offer that, or maybe like a webinar, or a group training, or a um, bunch of YouTube videos, or you know something like different sliding scale for people that want to get you a different price point for 
That's a, that's a good point. So he's asking, um, how do I handle different price points for training for people that want like a lower price training? And I think you had it right on is that you would create training materials online, like a webinar um, or a WordPress meetup or create training in line and set it at different price points. Obviously, one-on-one -on -one is going to be a little bit pricier than somebody that's doing a group class. Um, but it's usually very specific and tailored to that person, like their needs. Like they want to know, like you're not going to have to learn about all this X, Y, and Z because you only want to know about T. You know, so they're not going to tell you about all that. So that's kind of like what I see the benefit of one-on-one. -on -one. Does that kind of answer your question? Awesome. Yes. Well, I think automation is absolutely essential. Um, things, you, you need to be able to have a way to work smarter and less hard, and one of that is by using automation. So whether you're automating, whatever you can automate, automate everything, I think. Um, on Sunday, the automation talk. Oh, there's an automation talk on Sunday. Perfect. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. I, I really haven't looked out for freelance work. I've, I've been kind of lucky that it's found me. Are you, were, you were asking about your, the best freelancer websites. I avoid Odesk. <laughs> I avoid Odesk like the plague because um, mostly I find like what they're looking for is they're looking to outsource things for $2 an hour or a lot of headache. Um, I know Codable is, is another one that is also really good. Codable, you actually have to be sign up and be approved to be one of their specialists. And there was another one I thought, but Codable was, was the best one, I think. Any other questions? Okay, if there's no other questions, you guys have a great rest of your day and enjoy WordCamp. Thank you.